Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I'd like to adjourn today's Board of Supervisors meeting in memory and in honor of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She was an equal rights advocate, uh, a legal trailblazer, and later in life became a cultural icon uh, with the nickname the Notorious RBG. Uh, her journey to her place in our country's history uh, had a very rough start. Uh, despite graduating first in her class at Columbia Law School in 1959 and being highly recommended for a law clerk position, she was passed over because she was a woman uh, and a mother. Uh, she faced blatant and overt discrimination early in her life because of her gender, but yet she persevered. She overcame and broke through the wall of inequality uh, and built a, a tremendous career that will have a lasting impact uh, on our entire country. Uh, she did end up receiving an offer for a different clerkship. She went on, went on to teach law at Rutgers and Columbia Law School, uh, and then was the general counsel for the American Civil Liberties Union and founded their Women's Rights Project. In 1980, Justice Ginberg was appointed by Jimmy Carter to the U.S. Court of Appeals in the District of Columbia, and in 1993, then President Bill Clinton appointed her to the Supreme Court. At the time, she was only the second woman in history to be appointed to the court. It's worth noting that in her confirmation process for the U.S. Supreme Court, she received 96 I votes uh, in support of her nomination to the court, and she served the court in this country faithfully. But before she joined the Supreme Court, Ruth Bader Ginsburg paved the way for equal rights, and in particular for the basic uh, fact that women should be treated equally as men uh, in our society. In the landmark case of Reed versus Reed, she masterfully argued that the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment could be applied to defeat gender discrimination. Her work in this case debunked an Idaho law that men should be favored over women uh, to manage a family's estate. A recent Forbes article credited this case as being the first time gender discrimination was recognized as a direct violation of the Constitution, and it became the foundation for future decisions that protected both men and women from such discrimination. She applied her beliefs in fair and equitable rights uh, to all in our society. In another landmark case of uh, Weinberger versus Weinfeld, Ruth Bader Ginsburg su successfully argued at the Supreme Court that a widower under the Social Security Act should receive the same benefits as a widow uh, in order to care for children. As a Supreme Court justice, she made compelling arguments uh, for the basic notion of equal wages and while in one case her argument did not move her colleagues in the court, it did move the country and it moved the law. In the case of Ledbetter versus Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company, a lower court on an appeal reversed a decision that ruled in support of Mrs. Lilly Ledbetter's complaint that she was discriminated against for more than two decades. The Supreme Court upheld the lower court's decision by a slim 5-4 margin based on the statute of limitations for bringing complaints forward. But less than two years after that decision, then President Barack Obama signed into law the Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act, which eliminated the limitations on when complaints for discrimination on pay can be made. In other cases, such as Virginia Military Institute, 1996, she wrote the majority of the Supreme Court's opinion that ruled the university's policy of excluding women from being admitted violated the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. She also delivered a thoughtful and persuasive oral argument in 1995 in Oberfeld versus Hodges that is said to have swayed the court to support a landmark ruling to grant same-sex couples the right to marry in all 50 states. It was not just her efforts in persuading the court that are, are memorable. Uh, her dissent in the Shelby v. Holder case uh, ruling the right, Voting Rights Act of 1965 no longer requiring states who had a history of suppressing the vote to go before a panel when trying to change uh, their procedures uh, was a uh, mastery in dissent and a course at the University of California, San Diego, I teach on the Voting Rights Act, that dissent is analyzed line by line to provide an incredible legal foundational basis uh, that future courts uh, may utilize and certainly multiple legislators have cited in their efforts to try and change the law. And time and again, she stood up for a woman's right to choose uh, to protect uh, all in our country, um, and certainly someone who has left her impact. I had the great honor a few years ago uh, of being invited to a very small group uh, of individuals, a handful of us, who were able to spend several hours with, with Justice Ginsburg, and I found her to be incredibly brilliant, uh, insightful, feisty, uh, a little playful, 
uh, truly someone who at an advanced age had a keen intellect and compassion and continued a diligent work ethic right up until before her death. Uh, throughout her career, she may not have always been on the right side of the final vote of the Supreme Court, but I believe history will judge she was on the right side of the basic notion of justice. Uh, she believed that to create a more perfect union, everyone deserves to be treated equally and to be treated fairly. Uh, I believe Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg is the embodiment of everything that is good in humanity, and our country is better uh, for her life and her service and commitment. Uh, I think it was appropriate we lit the county building in her honor, uh, and I'm pleased today we can adjourn uh, today's meeting in memory of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg.